Hi, I'm Brett Willoughby, CPA, and I work at Tax911.com. We prepare tax returns for overseas Americans. And today, we're going to talk about permanent homes. A permanent home is a feature under the tax under uh, tax treaties. There are a lot of countries that have this provision in the tax treaty, and generally, it has to do with the tiebreaker rules. If you're a resident of the U.S., in other words, you can tip the scales to be a resident in the U.S., then you're you're taxed in the U.S., which you're always going to be taxed if you're a U.S. citizen, but it limits the uh, ability of your host country to tax you to only income that is sourced in that country. So let's review the uh, permanent home rules. One of the easiest ways to prove that you have a permanent home outside uh, your host country is to obtain a certificate of residency, and you do that by filing Form 8802. This is a form that's filed um, with the U.S. government. You get a letter back saying you're a resident of the U.S. If you're a resident of the U.S. under the, the tiebreaker rules in the permanent home, that's pretty much the end of the story. You can give that to any auditor from your host country. The other thing I'm going to jump ahead is if you um, obtain a lease, a long-term lease in America, or you purchase real estate in America, it's a lot easier to look like you have a permanent home in America. And kind of the unwritten thing here is that uh, if you have a visa that limits you to how long you can stay in a country, it's difficult, I believe, it's difficult for the host country to make the case that you have a permanent home in their country if you're limited and prohibited by a visa from staying there long term. But auditors are not easily persuaded. And so one of the things you might do uh, to minimize potential tax exposure is to split your W-2s and have federal income tax. Because that auditor is going to want to see, well, are you paying taxes in the country? And you can say, yes, here's a copy of my W-2. If you have federal income tax withheld, they'll say, okay, you're paying federal income tax um, to America, therefore we're, your permanent home is in America, not here in our host country. Some employers will hire both husband and wife, but just give a W-2 to one of them. And if your employer is one of these employers, you can split your wages and take advantage of the lower tax rate in case you lose, the lower tax rate um, for the husband and then the wife. So you're using up those lower taxes by splitting your wages between two W-2s. Another thing that you can do if you're worried about your tax status, you can file a non-resident return in your host country. So whatever source income you have from your host country, you report on that non-resident return. This could be interest, it could be wages from local employers, those sorts of things. And it starts the statute of limitations. Statute of limitations is how long can um, that taxing jurisdiction go back and audit you. So once you file, generally that starts the statute of limitations. Generally in America, it's three to four years. And most importantly, because tax treaties are very fact dependent, it's very important to get competent tax advisors, both in your host country and in the U.S. In your host country, you don't just want someone who knows the tax law in your host country, you want someone who knows the tax law and how they impact Americans. Because Americans are taxed on, on their worldwide earning. This is unique among many of the countries. So you want someone competent locally that knows and works with Americans. And you want someone in the U.S. who is familiar with Americans living and working abroad. If you'd like to book an appointment with us, and we would be glad to go over these, go to our website, tax911.com to book an appointment. Thank you very much. Have a great day.